Good morning, good afternoon, good day from La Mata in Spain. Today, we're going to talk about businesses in the Philippines, the pitfalls and the upsides. Um, the, the first thing I want to say on this is quite simply, there is a lot of plus sides to it. I know a lot of people don't do very well in business, but at the same time, it often comes around to other things going on beyond the business itself or how the business was managed. I've never lost money on a business in the Philippines, ever. Even the um, ones that weren't great, still at, at minimum broke even. Uh, for example, setting up with the old load business using the one system, um, it was an expensive entry into the business, but later on we discovered it's more being used as a networking tool rather than actually a business. You know, they, because for for us it it was more to do with uh being set up as a load business and i was looking for the reliability of being able to use a computer instead of a phone um but it was actually being more on the case of they were just selling the system to sell it to other people to make money off people buying into the system but even that over time we got the money back on the sales on load um but yeah i wouldn't advise getting into some of these systems because they're purely on a networking basis. The upside to the businesses for a start is you've got an income that is local. The income locally means that you can support yourself. It means that you're not reliant on your pension or income overseas as much. And often it can be beneficial in the sense if you are using your pension or whatever as your regular money, the business money can help the business grow or start other businesses. So it does help develop things long term for everybody. Um, when I say everybody, I mean your family, the relatives, whatever, you know, because I know a lot of people think, well, I'm not really bothered in helping those. But I do think if you do, it actually makes life easier a lot of time. I'm not saying every relative could be helped because some people are beyond that. Um, but at the same time, you can make life easier for yourself, your partner, and a lot of other people if they want to pull their weight. Um, which gets down to one of the pitfalls, which is a lot of people cannot run a business. They don't know how to. They've, they've never done it in their life. They don't commit to it. They don't understand um, the cash register is not spending money because it's not profit, because it, goods have been sold to actually accommodate this. So at the end of the day, what you've got is the, probably 20% in the cash register is actually spending money. 80% of it is actually got to go back on stock. And a lot of people don't get that. So when there's money in the register, cha-ching, they're quite happy to take it out and spend it because uh, there's no connection between the stock being replenished and what's in that cash register. Um, that's just the, the way it is. You know, it's very difficult to change some of these people's mindsets because that's that's closed down there, isn't it? Just checking, this is still running. Because I keep getting, I keep getting my uh, live chat close on me. Just checking, it's still there. It's done it to me again. <sighs> is this still live? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've lost my live chat. I can't actually see where I'm talking. Um, so apologies for that pause there because it literally just vanished on me. Um, yeah, so some people don't know how to run a business. They don't see that money to tell as being it's back into the business. But also you get people that see it as your business. So if it fails, it's not their problem. They don't take the same level of responsibility as you do, which is where one of the important things is you need to commit to the business. You need to be one of the key elements that say, I want this to work and this is how it's going to work. But also be aware that people will take money out of the register, et cetera. You need to understand that you need to have a good auditing process and not really trust people, especially day one. But over time, trust is gained. It's not given for free. Um, 
So those things you need to take on at day one. The people won't run it at the same level you do, in the sense that they aren't committed to it. It's your business, your problem. Um, but also, you need to commit to it because I know a lot of people just go, "Oh well, I set it up for the wife. The wife does it." And then it's not my problem. But at the same time, you can't, can't then complain in two months' time it's gone bankrupt if your wife has no idea how to run a business, which is quite common. Um, locations can be an issue as well because some of the rents are phenomenal. If you're in the, you know, getting to the busier areas or trying to get into the malls, it's a bit crazy on the price. You need to make sure your evaluation is actually going to bring enough money back into, into the investment. You know, at the end of the day, you're looking for a return on investment. You're not looking to just pay the money out and uh, like opening a bar, spend a lot of money on the refer, you know, setting it up to find that people using it are, are only there uh, because it's cold, colder, but at the same time, haggling over the price of beer by one peso or something. Um, because, it's not balanced. You know, the people paying for the, the uh, environment do not pay enough to justify the refurbishment costs. So you've got to make sure that if you set that up, you're in the right location and it's simply viable. I mean, in Minkle Nelia, there was a restaurant open. It was quite a nice restaurant. It only survived six months. I think the rent was, must have been too high because uh, it's a nice, nice place. But I mean, we used it quite regularly. But I don't think there was enough people in that area to sustain it. Um, but also, if the rents are high, then it's near impossible. You know, with, with the right type of business in the right location, different scenario. Um, what's that? Yeah, but the other one is rent hikes. If you're renting a place out, be aware. I've come across this a few times where they've took a short-term rental on, like, say, a year for testing the business. Then what's happened is the, the rent's been hiked in the following year. It's suddenly gone up twofold or whatever because they're seeing the business is working well. Uh, be aware that goes on. I mean, how you protect yourself against it is up to you. Um, we don't really get into that because quite simply we, we buy the land or sit on, so we don't really have the problem. Um, but that is one thing to be aware of, price hiking, because they can see you're doing well, so they want a cut of it even though it's not their money and they're not working for it, they own the land that your business is set on. Their permits and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> we, I mean, I'll just give you an instance, because I know this goes on in Makati as well. The, the fire extinguishers are good. You know, you don't need to replace your fire extinguishers every year. Um, I can't remember the actual pressure you've got to have them tested every year that's for sure but i'm just trying to think when you need to replace them because i think they're good for about 10 years most of the time um but you will get fire officers that won't give you your fire permits unless you buy new extinguishers um that's i mean it's corruption as far as i can see it um there's no reason for the fire extinguishers to need to change in but it seems to be quite a common practice i mean i know when we had ours what happened was the guy was there, said we needed two fire extinguishers, and the phone was already ringing by the time he was at the gate with somebody trying to sell his fire extinguishers. Uh, we, we bought our own in the end. We went into Cebu City and bought our own because um, I just don't like the corruption. Cause selling is over, overpriced and the fact that we didn't need them is two different things. But at the end of the day, I don't see why we should get ripped off in that way. Mayor permits, if you don't get on with the mayor, that could be an issue. If your neighbours get on with the mayor and you don't, that could be an issue. Um, because if you can't get a mayor's permit, you're going to have problems. The same with most permits. Uh, if you get a good rapport with the local government, uh, you don't really get any hassles. But it is something that can be a real Achilles heel because you can't open your door. They'll keep shutting you down. Uh, because you haven't got the right paperwork, and sometimes they won't give you the paperwork. I know in our case, they only do them every three months or whatever, so they just say come back in three months. But at the same time, I don't really get front of face myself. I use um, other people to do a lot of the running around because I like sitting in the background. Nobody really knows there's a foreigner involved, which means there's a lot less hassle uh, because they don't 
they don't see you there, so they don't see the opportunity for exploitation, which can occur. Um, the next thing is family issues. Family issues are can be good and bad. Some of them, are, you know, you can have a good selection of people that will help with most things and not want a lot for it, if at all. But then you've got the other thing, like a friend's eatery went bankrupt because the family were going there to eat every day for free. Um, because the, he treated it as if it was his house, you, you know, where you go to somebody's house in the Philippines, you, you often hear the phrase, let's eat, where you offer food. Well, they've just seen this as an ideal opportunity to go down to a local eatery and eat every day for free until they bankrupted the business. Get people to understand that this is not your home. This is a business. This is not run in the same way and separate the two. You can have family work there, but it's under a strict set up as a business. It's not to do with, oh, well, that's my sister, that's my brother or whatever. Because at the end of the day, you need to be running it as a business, not as a support mechanism for people that think they've got a free ride. Uh, Janie Recats, hey ho, hi, how's it going? Uh, the next issue I'd say, say would be supply. Um, one of the big problems I faced in the Philippines, especially related to things like bread, is getting steady supplies of some ingredients. Um, I know some of the problems we're having, uh, a friend of mine was having, was with the alcohol for his bar. Um, because every time you go there, you have to grab what you can because next time it might be out of stock. That's pretty normal there. Uh, Janie Wicats, yes, I agree. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, George, uh, and they come from the mountain tea and get a load. Yeah, exactly. They, some people will abuse it if they can, and the other thing is when one person abuses it, it doesn't take long for the other people to be aware of it. But then if you don't help them out, then suddenly you're the bad person because you give one person some help and it becomes a problem for you know you because everybody hates you because everybody wanted the same as the first person got. Um, I simply say separate business from family and that way you don't get into these things. You just go, no, it's not, you know, it's a business. It is not my pocket. It's not, they're not the same entities. And it doesn't matter whether they like it or not. That's all you got to do. It's like, well, I don't see it the same, and that's it. There's no conversation on it. Yeah, family. Yeah, J Janie says family. Yeah, yeah, the family can be a a good a help or a hindrance. Depends how the, on the family. Depends who they are, their mentality, whether they want the business to be a success or just seeing it as an opportunity. Um, so yeah, it is an issue. Uh, so, like I say, with supply could be an issue as well because if you can't get the regular ingredients or whatever you need, then it can affect your business quite considerably. Even things like having a laundrette, having the right washing powder can be a problem. If you don't have access to regular supplies of washing powder, um, then it doesn't really function as a good laundrette. Um, or you're a pain above the odds for stuff that should be a bit cheaper, but you're struggling to get it in bulk. Uh, next one is experience, which sort of ties everything together. A lot of expats own businesses they have zero experience in. Um, they do get involved in it in the sense that they see it as a cheap opportunity, and if it works, it's good. But at the same time, it doesn't work, shouldn't really complain. Because if they've gone into it with their lack of experience, not only on that type of business, but on the local workings, local knowledge, uh, local culture, then all these things have a positive or negative impact depending if you take it as experience and develop it. You know, when I set up a business, I don't expect to make any money off it at day one. I expect it to take time to make money. I expect to have to reinvest some money early on because of the stuff that are unseen. Um, that is just reality. You know, at the end of the day, even big companies have the same issues. They don't expect to go in there and be making money at day one. They're going to expect some things are going to be an issue. Getting sustainable where it's ticking over could be quite quick. But at the same time, if you open the restaurant and then suddenly realize that you put one grill in and you need four, then obviously you've got an investment that is suddenly eaten into your profits that you won't be covered within the business but you need to get the, the other grills up and running as quick as possible because you've got more money coming in because there's more customers. So you do get these sort of things where you will have to invest as and in when 
um, which is why I like to keep a separate fund that's not really in the business, but it's available to it. You know, that way you don't get into these problems. The same with construction work. It's, a lot of the time, people don't have the right tools, don't have the right equipment, so I buy it and then I just store it. Because uh, that way I've always got my own equipment there that people can use when I'm there. Um, so, you know, when I say use it, they'll watch like a hawk to make sure they look after it after the the event of somebody dropping a, a uh, welder machine off a roof. Uh, but that's another story. Uh, Janie Recats, but it's hard. It, I'm a Pacific Islander. We have to share everything. Makes me mad sometimes. But in the Western eyes, it's so it just might put my foot down even harder when you have a business. Yeah, I think I think with that though, you need to turn around and say it's not yours. It's a business, as if it's a separate person almost. Uh, because that way you're sort of saying it's not mine. I don't own all of this. I've still got bills to pay, etc. Um, because you need to be really firm on a business. I mean, that's why I think a lot of the Chinois do so well, is because their culture is very different in that sense. Because they they do understand business and they do put the business forward but i do i understand the whole oh we've got to share everything sort of thing but it, that's why it hinders a lot of things it could have developed to a huge um business over years you know because they do get some some businesses getting the money taken out at day one where it's not even made money yet or it's got bills to pay people spending the money before it's even been made um, you know, like, for example, people getting loans for, say, opening an internet calf and then spending the money because they see the money coming in, but they haven't paid the, the loans at the end of the month. It's, it's yeah, you just say, well, you know, you say, well, I don't know if I've made any money yet. You make an excuse for it. I don't know if I've made any money until at least the end of the year. And, you know, until I've actually paid all my bills, I don't know if I've made any money because next month might be quiet. The month after that may be busy. I don't know. You know, until you, you've got to try and force it to the point where people are going, well, they're not, A, you're not going to give me any money, but B, um, I can sort of see some logic in there. The, the fact is you don't know, you know, and I'm the big thing for me on this journey, a lot of these people couldn't care less if your business went bankrupt. And that's why I am quite stern on it. You know, at the end of the day, I've seen it where people just, as, as long as they've got their San Miguel or whatever, they couldn't care less that you went bankrupt. And that's why you should, you need to be firm on it. You know, at the end of the day, they're taking money from your mouth. They're taking food from your table. Um, do you, this is why you need to turn around and be a bit more stern with them and just say, I don't have it available. I don't know. I've got bills to pay this month. I don't know if I've made any profit whatsoever. Uh, George, taxes, that is a pitfall. Um, yeah, expenses are always a pitfall. Um, but tax, yeah, yeah. Consciousable, but also maybe a flag up where you should actually invest the money because um, it may pay to actually reinvest it somewhere within the business to grow something else. Uh, you know, like I was saying, if you with a, getting more grills in, putting a rotisserie in, whatever, so the, the profit margins are sort of kept down. But also, I think the actual Philippines economy is about 40% black market. So yeah, I would say you need to look at it from that aspect. A lot of people do not pay any tax whatsoever. Um, or if they do, it's a bit like Spain. It's very selective on what they are paying. <laughs> um, yeah, as Janie Rika says, but family can make your life hell. I agree, they can do. And it, the thing is, when they're doing that, you, your reaction to it should be more in the line with protecting yourself. Because if, if people think it's okay to rob you of everything you own, it says more about them than it does about you. You're not being a bad person by protecting yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to get, uh, lift yourself up. You're trying to push yourself forward. You're trying to develop your own business. People dragging you down, they, they're, the problem, they're the problem. Their attitude is the problem. They, you are trying to help yourself. But if you want to help others, a lot of the time, you have to help yourself first because obviously if you get your business up and running, you have more money. If you have more money, you're more likely to help them. But if they spend all your money at day one, nobody's got any money. No, There's no business. It's all gone. And that's I know it's a very common problem, and I, I understand completely because I've had these same conversations with some people. 
Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to treat it as if like, I, this is my business. This is how I make my living. It's not for spending. It's not for spending. I need to develop my business. I've got to feed myself first. And once I get my stuff up and running, I will then help you choose to, because <laughs> uh, I know in the culture, there's this often the debt of gratitude and things like that create these issues. Um, where it becomes a long-term investment almost because somebody may have invested like say 200,000 pesos in your education and everything else from childhood, et cetera. But you know what? In the West, we call it children. We have children. We look after our kids. We don't go, there's my pension plan walking around. Um, and in the Philippines, I do think people need to change some of their mindsets because they're actually ha hindering the development of the, the people within the country because they're stopping them being able to develop a business. They're stopping them being able to get on the, um, standing on their own two feet and being independent. And I can understand why some people just think, you know what, I'm not even going to go to work. I just give them all my money to my parents. What's the point? And I can understand it in some ways because at the end of the day, what is the point? If you're going to give everything away, why would you? And that's why I think people need to be more firm with their relatives. And if you help them you, or explain it in this way, if you take all my money from me now, what is the point of me going to work? And then when you want to, you get sick or you want to stop working yourself, and I think, you know what, I'm just going to stay at home because there's no point working. What happens then? There's no money. But if I go to work, I develop my own business, and it may only earn, say, 6,000 pesos a month now. When it's earning 50,000 pesos a month, how much is that worth to us as a family? If you get a medical emergency, I can afford a medical emergency. If you need a home care nurse or whatever, I can afford to give somebody long term to deal with your daily needs. But right now, I need support, not somebody taking from me. And that's the way I would push it. I really would. Because if they won't understand that, then they, you're, you're in a difficult place. And I do know it's very hard to get people to get their head around that. I've seen it. It's very hard to get people to understand that sometimes, um, that they need to support, not hinder. Um, the next point on this one is uh, theft. Theft is a big problem. Um, now, theft comes in many ways. I mean, I would say one of the, the big ones in the Philippines, especially with low business, is how it just disappears. You know, globe eating people's load. Um, especially when they're reloading. Um, that's one of the things I don't understand why it disappears so easily. Uh, but also, I had somebody, I know somebody had a fish business where they were running the fish up from southern Cebu, and his driver was putting his own fish in there. Um, basically, he was stopped selling the guy's fish and was putting his own fish in and selling that instead. So not only is the driver adding fish to it is actually taking fish out that the the owner of the vehicle that pays all the bills and pays the guy's salary is putting less of the, his fish in and putting more of the driver's fish in. Those sort of things go on. Same with a chef that actually turns around and cooking in the restaurant where your ingredients ain't going down, but this guy's bringing in ingredients, running it through the cash register, et cetera, and pocketing the money. That goes on as well. There's a lot of things that go on you need to be very cautious of. That's why I say you need to be very careful with what people do in your business because a lot of time they don't care. They really don't care. And when they get caught, they're angry at you for catching them. You're ang they're angry at you. They've lost face. They're embarrassed about it. But it's your fault in some ways, in some bizarre thought in their head. Because they do not want to admit responsibility that they are a thief. They don't want to admit that they've been caught stealing. And that's why sometimes you've, you've got to treat people as if you expect them to steal from you. Because that way you're looking for removing opportunities. Because if there's less opportunities, well, it's less likely to happen. But also if you start noticing things like your rice is going down or whatever, somebody's looking a bit shy on the the amount, then it's time to start double checking on your auditing. Um, I, one of the things a friend of mine does, he's, he installs CCTV systems. 
And he's caught people doing it. They put CCTV, like there's a petrol station, and then there's a garage at the back that does repairs and maintenance. And he's caught people stealing things, even like motorcycle helmets and things, um, because he can see them. He sat in the petrol station looking at the CCTV. You've just got to cover your back, because at the end of the day, once people, the first people get caught, the rest, the rest of the people aren't going to be so quick to do it because they know you're on the ball. But you also get this thing where people can do it collectively because if one wants to steal, they'll sometimes get the other people involved because that way everybody's involved and nobody's going to go to the boss about it. And you need to uh, bear that in mind because I've seen that happen as well. You know, people were stealing meat out of the freezer, um, but there was four people involved. The fourth person didn't want to get involved. They were putting food in his bag. Um, yeah. You've got to bear that in mind. These things do go on. Uh, getting a good accountant, look for recommendations as well. It's very easy. I mean, even in Spain, getting good accountants is a minefield. Because um, a lot of people just assume that you'll just keep sending them money and they'll just do the absolute minimum. What you want is an accountant that actually turns around and can say to you, spend it like this. Don't buy that. If you're going to invest in something, do it this way, et cetera, et cetera. Um, by the way, if you're finding this chat useful, please give us a thumbs up um, just to, you know, so help support the channel a little bit. Um, and those are the things that you have to be aware of if you're setting up a business. You need to be on the ball with it. Also, if you're an expat and you're hopping in and out of the country, maybe you need to make sure that the person that's left behind or the people left behind can be trusted to run it so it's up and running the way you want it while you're away. Um, CCTV with IP cameras these days, you can monitor things remotely as well. Um, my my place is monitored 24 hours a day. We, we've got IP cameras um, in our compounds. Um, at the same time, um, the, I mean, the other thing with the, uh, the cameras is there was, you, you can make sure that there's a deterrent there, even if you're not watching. If they know this camera's watching, people are less likely to steal. Simple as that. Even if they don't know you're watching, you know, they just having it there and just saying, I, I watch the camera from home, I record it, and then when I'm sitting watching TV, I sit there with it switched on and, on my other monitor, and I sit there and I'll watch it while I'm doing other stuff. Because even if you're not doing it, the whole point is they know it's there. They, they don't know when you're watching it. They have no idea. They don't even know if you haven't watched it for the last two years. But the fact if it's sat there, that's enough for a lot of people to not even think about it. But I do find that a lot of people, I'd say 90% of the people that have worked for me are all very good people, very trustworthy people. And I do think the problem is a lot of the time the ones that do steal cause a lot of damage in a very short period of time, which is why some people get quite negative on employing people from the Philippines because they've trusted somebody and they've abused it. They've stolen from them and it could have damaged the business in such a way that the whole business could have collapsed. So that's why you got to, I mean, myself, I take it from the viewpoint is, yeah, I hate people that steal, but if somebody managed to do it, it's partly my fault for not covering my own back. You know, at the, the end of the day, to get my trust takes time. There's, there's several people I do trust to run businesses when I'm not in the Philippines, but that list is not extensive. There's lots of people I know and friends with, etc. but it doesn't mean I would trust them with my businesses. No way. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Um, yeah, and I, I say that's the main ones. The, can be a bit of a problem is the weather and acts of God, should we say, earthquakes, typhoons, that sort of stuff. Because like when we went up to Tindog, when we did the aid relief, um, everything was wiped out. You know, all the power was down, the internet was down, roofs were off buildings, water wasn't being pumped, the pump stations were off as well. You can get these things that can be long-term. Um, I think, I mean, PLDT and the, the electric guys were out, Vico were out there pretty quick. I mean, they're, they were very proactive in getting things up and running again. And, and they uh, do say that, they, you know, they did a good job with what limited resources they do have. But at the same time, you've got to factor that in as well. Sometimes 
things happen. So if you're going to open a business in, say, northern Cebu, how often do they get bad typhoons? If you're opening a something up in Luzon, are you in an area that floods? If you're opening up in Bahol, how often do they have earthquakes? Because because I know in all these areas they've had a lot of natural disasters over the last few years, and you've got to bear that in mind. Because if you're lying on the business, be 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 aware that one day it may get wiped out by bad weather, or um, an earthquake, or something else. And I know it sounds a bit over the top in some ways, but if you factor that in, that when you're researching a place to to go, is it anywhere near any of these problems? When did they last have an earthquake? When did they last have a typhoon hit and destroy the place? Can you insure against it? Is there does your business need to be in that location? Is there a way that you can move things if it is in typhoon season, if you had to? Um, all these things need to be sort of factored in to protect yourself. Um, because a lot of time, I, I mean, you've probably seen it in uh, Thailand where they, they had it with the, um, oh, what do they call it, tsunami, where people's entire bars and livelihood were wiped out in one go. And everything was gone. You know, everything they built up and everything else, it's just wiped out. There's just nothing left. Um, and being able to protect yourself a bit against that, I mean, the first thing would be on that is you need an emergency fund. Even if you can't protect the business, you should be banking. You know, you need to build up a fund to get you going again if something did happen. Um, and it's not easy. I know it's not easy, but you've got to factor these things in because what if it happens? Can you factor yourself in a bit of protection in there so that you can actually put 10% away every month to actually protect the business and yourself against something going wrong? Um, I'll leave this one at that. It's a nice chat to everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks, George. Thanks, Janie. Have a great day.